everyone. Welcome you all again to the lecture series in political theory. You know, I am Professor H. Shri Kant, and today I'll be talking to you about uh, the ideas of uh, Shulamit Firestone, a radical feminist scholar. Feminist scholars view the theoretical contributions and achievements made by liberal and Marxist feminists till the Second World War as first wave feminism. The existentialist feminist Simone de Beauvoir, her The Second Sex, published in 1949, marks the pinnacle in the first wave feminism. Political crisis of the mid uh, 1960s gave rise to several protest movements in the West. It was during this period we also saw the dawn of uh, second wave feminism which tried to look at women's issues beyond liberal and Marxist perspectives. The second wave feminists tried to look at uh, the women's issues beyond suffrage, property rights, and equal wages for equal work. They felt that the rule of law and the socialist revolution are not uh, enough to ensure gender equality. Issues such as sexuality, family, marriage, reproductive rights, rape, divorce, pornography, etc. became the main concerns of uh, the feminists uh, who called themselves radical feminists. Shulamit Firestone's book The Dialectic of Sex, The Case for Feminist Revolution, Kate Millett's Sexual Politics, Mary O'Brien's The Politics of Reproduction, T. Grace Atkinson's Amazon Odyssey, Shirley Bunn's Lesbianism and the Women's Movement, Adrienne Rich of Women Born and Motherhood as Experience and Institution, and Suzanne Brown Miller's Against Our Will, Men, Women and Rape. These are some of the major theoretical contributions of uh, radical feminists. Radical feminists view rape, prostitution, pornography and compulsory heterosexuality as political acts of domination of men over the women. They try to reason it out why and how the men exercise control over the women and what should women do to escape uh, male domination. Radical feminists problematized uh, the private sphere and rise with the slogan, private is political. In this lecture, I will interrogate uh, the theoretical contributions of uh, Shulamit Firestone, a Canadian-American feminist whose book Dialectics of Sex, The Case for Feminist Revolution, published in 1970, in a way kickstarted uh, the second wave feminism. Interrogating the contributions of Marxism, Freud and uh, Simone de Beauvoir, Shulamit Firestone puts forward her own materialist view of history of women based on sex class division. She differs with Marx and Engels 
emphasis on class and accuses them of ignoring the psychosexual factors responsible for women's subordination. Engels accepted the sexual division of labor as the first division of labor that the human society witnessed. But Shulamit Firestone says that he ignored the fact that gender inequalities started from that point of time in history. Firestone views some of the claims of Engels regarding the women's subordinations are not factual. Although she gives credit to Engels for recognizing the importance of a reproduction, she shows how Marxists afterwards emphasized more on production and ignored the role of women in reproducing the conditions for the growth of uh, capitalism. Notwithstanding these differences with Marxism, Firestone sees in Marxist dialectical theory a possibility of uh, reinterpreting women's history from a materialist angle. She says that feminists need to ignore Marxist ideas on women but should use Marxist dialect dialectical method to build the history of uh, women. Her materialist conception views sex class division as the basis of uh, gender inequality. According to her, the division of in and yang pervades all culture, history, economics and nature itself. The sex class division precedes the economic division that the Marxists talk of. Men and women were created different and were never equal. Unlike economic class, Firestone says, the sex class directly sprang from the biological this biological reality. Questioning the very organization of culture and nature therefore becomes the starting point for materialist understanding of women's subordination. So says Firestone. Firestone believes that the natural reproductive difference between the sexes led to the origin of the sex class system and shaped up gender discrimination based on biological characteristics. Consequently, the women remained at the continual mercy of uh, their biology. Because of menstruation, menopause, constant painful childbirths, wet nursing, care of infants and female ills. Women had to depend on the males. She points out that even in the animal world, it is female who takes care of the infants. We can observe unequal roles arising out of uh, sex differences even in the animal world. Compared to the animals, human infants take even a longer time to grow up and they remain dependent on adults for several years. Intimacy of mother and child during the growing up years shapes the psychology of both female and the infant. Sexual differences compel the women and children to depend on men over or for survival. 
this dependency enables creation of a socio political and economic structures that justify the control of women by men they all reify the gender roles man being autonomous takes up the rational and technical roles in public spheres relegating the women to emotional and caring functions in the family setup if biology is destiny is there a way out for the women to get out of a prescribed gender role and escape male domination this is a, this was an important question for all radical feminists and you can see different radical feminists coming out uh, with different answers to this question some going to the extent of uh, viewing lesbianism as a way out for a uh, way out of uh, patriarchal domination but uh, firestone has a different answer she believes that the material conditions for change for are ripening today due to technological innovations and also because of uh, changing socio cultural values traditional marriage and family systems are gradually becoming irrelevant family planning measures use of contraceptives developments in the field of gynecology embryology and cyber technology have started creating new possibilities for the women to escape the tyranny of biology these changes have created material foundations for a future androgynous society which she of course says becomes a possibility only through the revolution the revolution according to her would put an end to power psychology sexual repression cultural sublimation family chauvinism and class privileges based on birth to create such an androgynous society where gender roles and differences cease to exist firestone such as some of these measures first destroy all institutions that segregate the people on the basis of sex and integrate women and children in all aspects of a larger society second functions of a child bearing and child rearing should be diffused both men and women should play the role of both mother and father household duties should be shared and rotated daycare centers are to be run by professional men and women third there should be freedom of sex for both women and children sex should be separated from reproduction sexual repression that leads to so many abnormalities should come to an end four all kinds of marriages heterogamous homosexual and transsexual marriages should be allowed five the people should go for children not out of uh, social compulsions but out of love six parenting can be done by the father mother or both one can have children out of wedlock and such children would not be discriminated seven traditional family life ceases to exist but the people live in communities for their own multiple needs children are brought up together in groups 
obsession with the blood relation should cease to exist. H. Children will have the same rights as adults and they have right even to choose who their parents should be. I'm sure that most of you listening to these views of Shulamitha Firestone may find her crazy and, and her views unrealistic. It is true that the androgynous world that she postulates is not something that is going to materialize in near future. She seems to tie the female subordination to biology and looks for solution to women's liberation in the new technologies emerging in the Western societies. It is true that new scientific innovations have the potentiality to ease suffering of the women. However, we are also aware of the technologies which can further enslave women. Developing countries have been a witness to acts of forticide and infanticide which go against the women and children. Technology can be liberating only in a socio-political system that is inherently progressive. That is not something that comes naturally. Shulamith Firestone is also aware of it in some ways and calls for revolution to accomplish this task. But what kind of revolution she is contemplating? Who will lead this revolution and against whom? Do all men join this revolution and what for? Unless one is very clear about these issues, the goal of androgynous society where the people cease to be man and or women in traditional sense remains a dream. Let me stop here. Tell me what you have to say about Shulamit Firestone. Write your comments in the comments section below. If you find this discussion interesting, let me tell you that I will be talking about uh, many such issues in future in this YouTube channel. I request you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and also inform the like-minded friends to join. For the time being, let me say goodbye and thank you. Meet you once again with a new lecture on a new theme. Bye for now.